see you, Essie, so you'll have to verbally tell us. You'll have I to will, sneeze. I promise. Okay. <laughs> well, if anyone's watching, we have our, our green on. Everybody has the shram, shamrock and, and green fill. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. You guys oh, good. my God, it just looks electricity. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Door to Door. Today, it's a special day. Oh, it's St. Patty's Day. So everybody should have their shillelaghs and their shenanigans on and their shamrocks like I have. I took this off of the neighbor's door. I hope they don't, I hope they don't mind. We're so happy you're here. We're so happy to talk to you today about a bunch of different things. But we're going to start off this hour talking to our really special guest author. And Lainey is going to take this away. So Lainey, do your Irish. <laughs> do a little jig. I don't have a jig or if I did, I'd do one. Um, <laughs> hi, thank you. And I am so happy to be here on St. Patrick's Day with everyone, but I am even more happy to introduce our special guest author, which we gave some clues to, but I wonder if anyone guessed. It's Sarah McCoy, author of Mystic Island. Hello! I'm so happy to be here. This is exciting. I am Irish. I'm, I'm McCoy, so <laughs> half <laughs> Irish and half Puerto Rican. That kind of makes could be a bit powerfully disastrous, but luckily it didn't. It's me, you know? So everyone know it in my family jokes that I got all the sort of fire of the Latina, Caribbean, Puerto Rican, and then I got all the the I guess we'll say it's the not a temper. That's a that's a negative, but it's the passion of the Irish side. So the passion of the Irish. So you put those two together and here I am. Surprise! Oh. Hey. <laughs> Surprise. Happy yeah. St. Patty's Day. Well happy we Day. Yeah, so happy St. Patrick's Day. We um we're talking about something we wanted to do for St. Patrick's Day because we wanted to catch up and talk to our librarians. And we we're like, well, we need a special author guest and like who's best to be on other than Sarah McCoy? Like you're just so full of joy and fun and it, it's a perfect match for this this episode. Oh, I am thrilled to be here. When you asked me, I was like, librarians? <laughs> Done. In. I know. I've probably told this story more times than I should, but honestly my librarian in middle school saved my life i mean i really was one of those very introverted very insecure coming up artist who just felt like she was never um embraced really by any group i also moved a lot as a military child and so when my librarian in middle school said don't worry about lunch because lunch was terrifying right the cafeteria oh my gosh who am I going to sit with? What tables? And oh, oh, I don't know anyone. And my librarian said, don't worry about lunch. If you want to, anytime you come to the library, I'm having lunch there. You have lunch with me and we'll talk about books. And I did that. And she, I love her. Mrs. Beale, I love you so much. Thank you so much. So. Oh, I love that. Her librarian. So I am yeah. always um, at each of your knee, literally thanking you and just in awe of everything you do for readers. So, okay, I could gush on and on about librarians. Wow. <laughs> I know, I know it's a crowd. It is, it is. So, but we're gonna talk about the book. Yeah, I'm going to do a little intro for those of you who don't know Sarah. I don't know who you are, but if you don't, I'm gonna give an intro. Sarah is the New York Times USA Today and uh, international best-selling author of Mer the novels Marilla of Green Gables, which I spy in the background there, and The Mapmaker's Children, The Baker's Daughter, and The Time at Stone in Puerto Rico. And um, your new novel, Mystique Island, is just a romp in the sand, and I'm gonna let you tell us a little bit about it, and then we have a video, so I'll let you tell us about it first. I know, I know, and I, you know, I have to tell all the librarians out there that Lainey and I already spent, like, what, an hour and a half or something like that crazy on a podcast together talking about all the research, and we just went down all sorts of rabbit holes about um, books connected to this book, and... Oh, it just, it, honestly, it's a library. I could put together a little library curriculum because, yes, I'm also the daughter of a teacher, if you can tell. <laughs> I know what a curriculum looks like very well. So, I mean, this book, 
I've been in Mystique in the in the imaginary world of it and in the research of it for four years. Um, and that has been immersive. Um, so this is this is it, and it's set in 1970. In, it begins in 1972, but in the 70s, and um, it definitely has that sort of style and swagger to it. And I was thrilled when I saw the cover because I do another shout out. I think that the cover artist captured it perfectly. I wanted just, it's about this place that um, is an exclusive island. Um, it is only for the elite. It is a privately owned island. Um, so there's not much we really can say, oh yeah, we all go vacation there. It's not, it's not like the Bahamas or Puerto Rico, which, um, I am Puerto Rican, like I told you at the start. So, uh, everyone I feel like has gone to Puerto Rico on a cruise ship or, or, you know, stop by for this or that. And, but this Island, um, when I was doing my research on my first book, the time it's in Puerto Rico, I was looking into the original people of the Caribbean, which are the Taino Indians and the Arawak people. So in that research, um, I started to see who was coming into this, this curve of islands and colonizing, taking over and saying, okay, well, you might be Taino Indians, but we're not going to make you Spanish, Puerto Rico, or we're going to make you um, French, St. John's, we're going to, we're going to do something. So in that, I discovered this tiny little island that uh, was owned by different French, British, because someone came in and said, I have the money and I'm gonna buy it. And I thought, no way. Okay, I get that back in the day, but I've never heard of this island first off. And at the time I was a little bit um, hubris because I thought, I'm Puerto Rican. I know all these islands, I've done my research, um, but I'd never heard of this. So maybe it doesn't really exist and it does. It absolutely exists. And the fact that it has been purchased um, that's that blows my mind that an island can be purchased and handed down through purchasing of people to be then different languages and different different cultures that come in and say okay this is now my island and then when i found out that it is still there and available for basically purchasing today you can go and buy a plot there um i bet if someone had enough money they could they could still purchase the entire thing. Um, and so I discovered the 1970s and Colin and Ann Tennant, who are part of the royal lineage. They're part of that peerage that goes on in Great Britain. And they bought this island and it became this playground for Princess Margaret. Mick Jagger and Bianca, uh, a whole bunch of Vogue models and actors and actresses and um, celebrity musicians and gangsters and just scandal, scandal, scandal. But if you had enough money, you would title and you were up for any kind of romp. We'll put it that way, as you did, Lainey, romps. Um, yep. then you could come to this island and do as you pleased. And that, for that to have happened in the 70s, which for me, and I, I dated myself before we got went live by talking about, um, you know, some cultural things that others might not remember from the 90s, but this is in the 70s. And I, and that was not that long ago for people to be able to come and do as they please. And it stayed hidden from the press and it stayed hidden from their families and it stayed hidden from everyone, including our very own Princess Margaret, who I don't know about you, Lainey, or the rest, but I'm kind of obsessed with her. Me too. <laughs> and the royals. The, I think it was The Crown, right? The Crown on Netflix. I... Yeah, I think I sent you. I was like, this still the crown shaped hole in my heart. Like, I need more Princess Margaret in my life. Oh my gosh, that scene 
I don't know. I, I don't know if I should go down this rabbit hole, but that there's a there's a very very short scene in one of the episodes where they show mystique and it is every bit what's in this book it is like they even put it it made me think of like the uh romance novels and the the romance scenes from the the 70s and the 80s where it was like someone turned on a fan off stage and the hair is blowing (laughs) and she's like her caftan is blowing and i was like this is this is mystique and it's a tiny little scene in netflix so if you want an easter egg Go to go to Netflix, watch through and find the, yeah. the mystique scene. But it is that is what I definitely sought to capture in this book and to take readers there. And it's historical, but it's also um, it. I have to say it's one of my first attempts at doing a beach read. Right. And it was so much fun. I so enjoyed it. And I enjoyed having that historical component of like research and um, real history and real people that are involved. And then that component of readers, including myself, sitting on a beach and reading this and smelling those the smell of the of the citrus trees and of the pineapples and of the sea and all of that wonderfulness that's in and that grit and sand that's in um, in beach reeds that takes you away and lets you sort of float and at the same time I wanted something that also grounded you with like I said with some grit. And I think that's the historical part of the beach read for this. And so I tried to put them together um, to no, make it was like, yeah. you have to, it's, it, it fills you up, but at the same time keeps you turning pages. That's what right. I wanted. There's so much in this book. It, there's so many layers. And we talked a long time on the podcast about all of the themes. It's going to be great for book clubs. There's cocktails, there's 70s fashion, there's pop culture, there's, Royals and Mick Jagger and you just feel like every time you turn a page you're like You have a new thing to read, you know, it's not like okay Well, I went to you know this other dinner party and it was boring It's just like new people and free page and it's super fun. I loved the nuggets of pop culture, too I mean, I did not grow up during that time, but it really Connected me to like oh, I can see it and I can see that kind of 70s hue on it and I loved it and we have a video I don't know if you want to set up the video a little bit me Um, yeah like what is the can you just tell them like it's kind of in the book and I have to tell you all and yeah I've not showed this or shared this with anyone else you are like the exclusive first so I didn't get this video I didn't see it it wasn't posted anywhere until October 2021 so I the book was in production it was out of my hands I had nothing to do with anything at that point um and I was sent this video when they were taping the audiobook Cassandra Campbell is reading and I love her and she did Merle of Green Gables too and she was reading and she needed to know how to pronounce mystique because is it m u s s mystique or mestique m e s s or is it moustique, which is how a lot of, the, you know, sort of Frenchy say. It. And so they sent me different video links as the author to look at how they were saying and pronouncing this word. Um, and then for me to pick which one. So they sent me these links. And the first link, moustique, which is the one I went with for the pronunciation, was this video. And I, I was like, forget how they're pronouncing it. Oh my gosh, this video is everything. I mean, it, should I tell them the nugget or should I leave that Easter egg in there? That is up to you. That is so up to you. the characters, Willie Mae Michael and her daughter, Hilly, and her other daughter, her Joanne, um, they are, this is a family that is based on a real woman inspired by i'll say totally fictionalized but it is inspired by this real texan um ex uh, beauty queen who divorced a brewery baron and moved to mystique and was part of the founding sort of group there that colin brought in and he thought she was wondrous because she was an ex beauty queen from america which was 
exotic at that time. Um, she was an American and Texan and um, had money. And so all of that and divorced. So that um, she was my inspiration. And I'm watching this video. I'm watching this video on the screen go by. And then all of a sudden I see a familiar face that I have only seen in like two photographs that I've found in all my research of her. I see a face go by and then the camera goes back and stops on her. And I'm like, it's her. I literally felt like it was a ghost. I was meeting my muse right here on this video. And they stop on her and I thought, oh my God, I get to see her and I get to see her like in motion. And then she starts talking and they interview her and she is on this video being interviewed. And I thought, no, because they never say her name. They never introduce her. And then someone off camera at one point says, oh, no, no, come now, Billy. Her real name is Billy Ray. And they said, come now, Billy. And I thought, oh, it is her. I have, I have concrete evidence her and so she is on this video i'm obsessed with this video i am it's on youtube so it's public domain and laney now is going to show i think just a little bit you'll have to find her you'll have to go and watch the whole thing and find yeah her. i won't show her but also i think like i told you that just seems like kismet like that proves you were supposed to tell this story and i just I can't. And I can't a lot of imagine. characters are on this because Colin is on it. If you want to see what Colin was really like, he's being interviewed on this. Um, and Willie Mae's daughter is also in this. So you'll have to figure out yeah. who she is. So go ahead. Right. Okay. Well, I had a little bit of Colin, but maybe I'll leave that and just do the setup for it because we I, we don't want to take the whole time. It's like 30 minutes, but go check yes. it out. And see if you can like highlight the the showing of the video instead of me i know i said that but i'm wrong <laughs> um is it able to be thank you okay here we go the strange magic of a caribbean island drowsing in its sunlit sea to own such an isle it said is every man's dream not many of us have one more's the pity but this is one man's private paradise his island in the sun one of the Grenadines, that tropical scattering of little beauties with names like jewels between St. Vincent and Grenada. Mustique, three miles long and a mile wide, 1,400 lush acres of lime and orange and tangerine trees with that Caribbean chocolate box texture. Sky ridiculously blue, beaches white and soft as sugar, sea opalescent. Sun stunning, atmosphere seductive. Seductive. <laughs> seductive. I I just love that so Isn't much. It, and I oh I want to dance. I just <laughs> it perfectly captured. I thought, oh my gosh, this is every this this is everything, this video. And that was a real I mean, that's can we all stop and have a moment of shock? That was a real show that was like seriously put out broadcasted as like here's a here's an interesting place for everyone to check out like wow wow yeah. wow you're getting comments in the comment box and donna rasmussen says wow i'm getting a little chills over here like it's that's a very strange and very yeah and, and i also it. in that video it's so so the, the perspective of even the broadcaster who is talking about this island is so outside of our realm of like cultural acceptance today, right? That it almost feels like, no, this is not how things could have been at that time that this was generally accepted as like how we talk about a people and an island and a culture. And yet it absolutely was. So that's another, I know, theme in the book that I definitely wanted to pull some grit out of is so there are native people of this island just like and I pulled from my own um sort of bag of experience in that I come from Puerto Rico and my people are natives of that island that is where generations have come from and what does it feel like to be a native and yet to be a my the minority then 
and to be subjugated by someone who just walks onto your shore and says, can you pour me a drink? Like, how strange is that dynamic there? And I wanted to explore that. So that's definitely in the book too. But again, trying to keep it as a beach read, I wanted to bring that in in a way that made the reader engaged and interested and want to go Google and go to their librarian and get books out that had to do with that history and that culture in that time and not try to give a lesson in a beach read because that's not what this is about. This is about, wow, opening your mind, taking you somewhere to explore and getting to know these characters. And that, again, is more how I write. I write from a place of character-driven narratives. And so this is definitely about this woman, her daughters, and where they fit and how they change and are changed by this island and the culture there, both the colonizers and the natives, how it changes them and brings them, you know, the conflicts they have that bring them back together. So, yeah, no, I'm really it's glad complicated. Yes. Yes. And we talked a long time on the podcast. I keep saying podcast, but please go check it out because we, we really go in more in depth. Um, it's all on our our. Uh, blog and actually I can share and show you it's like all the stuff we're talking about is there but I also have to just point out well I'm going to try to share this one second um well one Sarah you have this great media kit on your website that has the cover look how gorgeous that is but all of these character names the praise which I didn't even get into there's so much praise um and the characters there it's gonna be great for book clubs they can just go and dive in and i don't know if you want to talk about any like book clubs stuff at, at all like what would you want to what do you think a book club could talk about if they want oh. to talk about this book oh my gosh yes on this on this kit you have an outline of characters so you can go and get little snippets of who the characters are real and imaginary um, uh, then there's a what's in your beach bag section that's sort of like how to, what to pair, what I would bring on the beach with me to read this book. I think book clubs could definitely get together and talk about the, um, first off, just an escape, right? How fun would it be to theme? I want to throw a party and theme it Mystique Island and have, you know, all the stuff that you could bring for summer. So beach totes and and umbrellas and drinks um particularly the mojito is a good one i can suggest and the mustique margarita is really good um in fact i yes, think please. um i think some folks might be getting some of those in future coming days so keep an eye on your box um and then i i think it's such a great novel to discuss uh, the times, the 1970s and what women were doing at that time, how they were um, becoming stronger and more vocal and more of a force um, in a positive way. And they were coming out of their shells. And what did it mean to be a divorcee at that time? I mean, it was a huge stigma and yet for some people, that was that was the only way to, and t t still today, that's the only way to be alive, to live your life, um, in what with what you were given, and to emulate that, um, right. and to show your daughters that you can be stronger. You don't need to conform to a pattern. Yeah, you can be your own uniqueness. And we talked about. Um, Lainey and I talked about in the podcast about the, the fact that I dedicated this book to my mama Maria, who is my 90 year old abuelita mm -hmm. from Puerto Rico. And part of that was that she came from that age when there was a pattern. There was a there was a form that you fit if you were to be a good wife, a good mother, a good, 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 whatever that definition mm -hmm. of good was at that time. And so she had daughters. And she taught them to um, be unique and to uh, celebrate their new uniqueness. And those daughters of, are my aunts and my mom who then taught their daughters, it's okay, you don't, you can be unique, be yourself. I think that's something book clubs, I would love to have book clubs discuss with each other and share with their 
um, loved ones. I think the culture of the time definitely could be discussed. I think uh, um, the music and the the there's movies and there's other books that are referenced in this. There's calf can. I I'm a bit obsessed with the caftan. So <laughs> Jane Green. Um, who's going to be my launch day in conversation, just not to give it away, but give it away to just you all librarians. Um, Jane Green is going to be my launch day partner in conversation, and we are obsessed with Captains, and she has a new book coming out, um, Sister Stardust, a little shout out, which is fantastic. <laughs> and we are saying how these books are like sisters. And I just got this. I just picked this up, so I am I haven't started reading it yet, and I am cannot wait um but they're like sister books um that have to do with this time period of oh just being free right finding freedom and yet too much freedom can lead to dangerous roads for some people when it just is like nothing no rules no no, nothing. Then, then what happens? Then it's almost like a Lord of the Flies that you get into. And so, what's the line then? I think that's great to discuss. What is that line, and when do we cross yeah. it? And how close to that line would you come? And how close would I come? And <laughs> who's writing in that? And that's an interesting yeah. discussion for book clubs to have with each other. How, what part of what goes on? Because there's a lot, like you said, mm. of rompage. Romp. Romp. The word I love gonna, it. That goes on in this book, but how much of that do you think is okay? And how much does does your club member next to you feel like, no, yeah. that was too much? I think that'll be an interesting discussion because I had those conversations with my mom who read an early, like, an, you know, printed off a Word document copy of this book. And she is very... She, I, she's she's just a lot more conservative than I am. We'll put it that way. And some of these things she said, oh, I just, I wouldn't, I would never. I'm like, well, you would never. Yes, <laughs> I would never, but they did. Yeah. And so that's- But that comes up in the book too, right? Because there's these generations of women who are at the crux of like the seventies, which is very different. And we've talked about that, you know, you're, you're in a new world you're constantly seeing stuff on tv you're getting this pop culture but they're different generations going into a island and they're different generations and they're different raised in different countries and then they come to this island where it's a mix of like what is the social class and i'm still held to you being a duke or a princess or whatever right. so like all of that comes in in the book too of like what what is okay and they get a little finicky about like what is okay and what isn't and that's what's interesting when you when you buy or or when you're in a place that you say there are no rules. Oh, but call me Baron. Um, but let's you know let's all pretend like we're all we can do whatever we want. But the princess is coming, and so you need to obey the rules of how you treat a princess. And then oh, but let's all party together and swap spouses and be swingers and do all that but don't mess with my boo over there you know what I mean? like it's just it was so interesting no wonder it just became this tangled nest of of uncertainty and wildness because they didn't know they were crossing lines and they didn't know how to deal with that and i think that's that's an interesting time an issue to discuss too. There's yeah. so much. There's, There's so much. And that's going to be because like you just sure. talked about what happens when cultures come in and they say, well, like Spanish, they're predominantly Catholic. But you know, English, Church of England, maybe that's their thing, you know, and so then who is right and who is wrong. And what happens when people take a spiritual high road and say, no, my way, then we have sort of the Spanish Inquisition again, you know, you could have that happen. So it was all, it's all very, it was really fascinating. And again, this is something that goes a little crafty, but my teacher, um, one of my teachers in um, creative writing school said to me, you know, the best thing you can do for your characters 
is put them in, on an island. Put the I make them on an island, whether that's in a room or in um, you know just in a secluded island, and see what they do, and give them an issue, give them a problem, and see what happens. And I think that is organically exactly what happened on this island is that they were on an island and they had to deal with what was going on with each other and that some of that was ugly and some of that was beautiful. And so then what do you do? So yeah. this definitely appealed to me. And that's, that's something I brought up to you is that, you know, three things that really influenced me even starting to write this book are, were my obsession with <laughs> islands, if you can tell, Puerto Rico, and then we went to Prince Edward Island. I'm kind of <laughs> obsessed with islands. Um, and maybe for that reason, because you can't run away. Every, you have to stay grounded in that place and figure it out, whatever is going on. Um, also, it was influenced by my obsession with British royalty. I am obsessed. I am more obsessed than you even know, people out there, librarians and readers and booksellers, I'm so obsessed that I'm embarrassed to tell people how obsessed I am or to like talk about it on Instagram because I feel like, oh, they're going to get a little scared at how much I love this <laughs> stuff. So British or they'll boils. join you. And then please do. And <laughs> then sibling dynamics and family sagas. I am just obsessed with family sagas and sibling dynamics and birth order. Like what I, that's like one of the first questions at a dinner party, I will probably ask you, I'll say, so <laughs> I'm a firstborn. What are you, you know, I'm like, I married a thirdborn, the baby of the family. So I know we talk about that all the time. Every time I see you're like, how's your brother? And I'm like, oh, how's your brother? I do. Like, I so think it's, I love I, it. we do. We talk about our baby brothers or my baby brothers and mm -hmm. your baby brother. Yeah. Um, because I think it really does. It really does say a lot about you and who you are. And it does influence your personality. I truly believe this. And <laughs> I can be alone in the world on this, but it influences your personality on where you are in that birth order. Oddly, now I'm getting the mirror of of sort of that peerage, that British peerage of where you are in their sort of order. Um, and sometimes it's not fair, you know, like my middle, my middle brother, it's never fair. It's not fair that, you know. Well, that comes the through in the book the too. Baby. Yeah, um, and I, I love I, it. I totally, um, those are the three things that yeah. really influenced me starting to write this book yeah. in terms of thematic. I, there's so much to discuss. Siblings come into the book too. I, we could sit here all day and talk about book club themes. And that's why everyone in the chat is like book club gold. We're so excited. So that press kit is on Sarah's website, but it's also on this. I'm going to show them our oh, yeah. podcast link because it has everything, including some fun music and then we're gonna have ask a couple of questions from the audience but i just wanted to okay. show them this okay so this is our podcast uh blog post thank you essie and um that lovely quote and i also just wanted to read because you mentioned um Oh my goodness, where did it go? You mentioned to Jane Green and she said, I am utterly charmed by the characters, the writing, the sunshine, the way Sarah McCoy seamlessly blends facts and fiction. Mystique Island is an immersive delight and a welcome ray of light. So just wanted to read that quote because it's awesome. I know. And um, so everything you need to know about the podcast and everything we mentioned is here, but we also have a playlist. Sarah oh. sent me music that she listened to while writing. I wouldn't have put this together if you had not specifically asked it for the librarians. And now it's out there. And I we just uploaded it onto my website, too, last night. And I was telling them before we jumped on live that um, my website folks went nuts. They were like, we're listening to it. It's fantastic. We love this. And I was like, wow, okay, this is exciting. And it does follow chapter by chapter of the book. I told Lainey that, that I just went through each chapter and pulled a song that is either mentioned or that I just felt like was a vibe of that chapter. So it, it, it flows pretty much with the reading of the book. 
Yeah, it's a treat. And also a link to your Pinterest board where you have some inspiration when you're writing and that video is there. So we'll put the link in the chat so that everyone can go check that out and, and dive deeper. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to stop talking and let the librarians ask some questions. I think please, please ask. Um, I can yes, ask. Okay. this has been so this has been so interesting. Um, can you hear me? You can hear me, right? I'm out in the field in my cottage. Um, uh, this is so great. And yeah, as Lainey said, just so much of excitement for the for the playlist. And people are, you know, very excited for book clubs. So this is just, and I, man, I'd, I'd go to any book club that, that you were leading, oh. Sarah, because you were so- <laughs> Well, let's do a book club, Virginia. Yeah, I will welcome you to my house any day. Fine, let's. Okay, let's go. I'll let's go now. The drinks. Um, they, well, sweet, sweet. Um, okay, so let's see. Lo so much love. Love from Earl of Green Gables. Folks are here from all over the place. Love Colin's wife. And Vicky Nesting says, was it challenging to mix fictional and real characters in this book? Did you have to do a lot of research about the real people and what they were doing at that uh, time? Luckily... Most of the real people that I used were public figures. So Colin and Ann Tennant, they're public figures. Uh, um, lady, well, do you know how every um, British person, if they're of nobility, they have another name. So Ann Tennant is Lady Anne Glen Connor, who recently put out her own memoir, which is fabulous and i highly recommend everyone go and get that from your librarian or your bookstore it is fantastic um and if you get the audiobook she reads it which is even more like blowing your mind um so that they said they gave their stories you know colin has a, his own i showed this to laney so this was the the research i did on colin this is his version of history which is i couldn't put a majority and i totally need this of this in the book because it was too salacious like what what this is not this isn't even like i don't know if this is legal like i'm not sure that that, that you should be like printing this in a book I don't know that I can put this in a book. I don't think readers would be like, oh my God, she went over the top. They would blame me for this kind of acts of wildness, rompage. We'll go back to the rompage. We'll just keep using that word. So they already had that out there and that made it easy for me to then pluck cherry pick which of these sensational stories I was going to use in the book that would further my fictional characters. And actually in this is where I read one tiny sentence about how, um, how much fun it was to have this Texan come to the island named Billy Ray, who brought her fun little accent and was so charming and he i mean he was he's so it's not it's not even that he's belittling which he is of the people he brought on but it was like they were toys they were toys on his pleasure island and they were there for everyone to play and so when i saw that and it said that she'd come and she she couldn't find anywhere um to, to find um a community anymore because she'd been blackballed from british society after she divorced her husband and then he died and so those are all the nuggets that i thought oh, ooh, ooh, and i don't you know this is one of those magical moments where people say but why did you pick her i don't know maybe because i lived in texas for 10 years and i thought you know that's interesting what what made her lead to leave texas and go to england i mean that's a that's a weird life trajectory from texas to england to mystique like what's going on here and then it said that she built her own boats and i thought who is this person and she sailed the globe and she had two daughters and i just thought ooh, this is interesting and so she it's inspired again by her but I made everything up. I made all everything about, you know, the dynamic between them. But I tried to 
to envision it in um, more in the spirit of a mother, a very adventurous mother and a very bold mother who would do something like this and her daughters and how that relationship would work in 1970s when one daughter is in acting and um, the stage and a model and beautiful and the other daughter is into musicians. You have these artists, again, maybe from my own family of having a grandmother and mother who encouraged our, you know, a unique artistry in their, in their children. So, um, so that was all sort of the magic and the, and the fiction that I brought in is the heart stuff that is real though. That's the odd part is that as authors, we take the, or historical fiction authors, particularly, we take the history. And then what we're really trying to do is say, here are the facts. Here's what we have on paper. Now let's re-envision and feel these moments. Let's feel this history because we're going to remember the feeling that we get from these characters in this time period with this history more than we'll remember the dates that we see on a piece of paper. And I think that is my ultimate calling as a historical novelist is to bring history to life as a memory for people today. For modern readers to feel like they have that memory now and that feeling that they take with them from Mystique Island, even though they've never been there and they maybe weren't even born yet. God bless you <laughs> in this time period. So um, did I answer your wonderful question, Vicki? I, I think I did. I think so it was, did. It was difficult, but it was a lot of fun for me because I like Rubik's cubes and puzzles, and if you read the Map Makers Children, I like maps and like choose your own adventure books were like my thing when I was younger. So, um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun, and and uh, definitely four years worth of writing. I rewrote the book four times in four years. Yes, oh there was a pandemic, and so what my first book was when I was trying to write a beach read fun, it no longer was pertinent once the pandemic hit it was it was a moot book really because i felt like there was so much deeper that we needed and we deserved as readers than that and so i had to go back and and scrap it and <laughs> rewrite yeah. which was mine. well there's there's great appreciation here from librarians about your research and well, thank you. Katie Stover said she loves hearing about the research that authors do on their books. And, um, and Katie's also given a shout out to Lainey on the podcast. And again, if you haven't listened to the podcast do because it's, it's terrific. And, um, there's one, uh, let's see, there's one question from, well, it's a comment from Todd Kruger in uh, Baltimore. What a fascinating discussion today. Love the scene set on Must Mustique on the crown. Um, and thanks for this special edition. Todd goes on to say Lady Glenn Connor has another book coming in November titled Whatever Next. He says, sorry, it's not from Harper. I just looked it up. It's from Hachette and that's okay. Who buys a book for the spine anyway? Let's be real. Um, <laughs> Except, I love that, Todd. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, I'm Todd. glad you now I'm sharing this moment with you where I'm envisioning the scene because it's all these colors, right? It's like this blue and she's like blowing and it's very scandalous. And I think she might be in a bed. So, yes, it's a very interesting scene. So, <laughs> Well, I, I, I don't have any other questions here. Just lots of love, lots of comments, lots of Thank interest and and. and much gratitude to you for writing the book. So I, I just, um, well, thank cover you. And I am, <laughs> That's I'm funny. so You're appreciative done. of librarians for embracing this book and embracing me. And I really feel that you are my tribe. You are my, my island. If I, who would you take on the, on your island? What, you know, what's that game that you play? What yeah. are the five things you would take on the island? That's a great book club. What are the, you know, what would you take on Mystique Island? I would take all my librarians for sure, because we would just end up sitting on the beach and reading together and passing drinks around. And it would be so wonderful. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a librarian, but I really hope I could invite you. You're invited today. too, Lainey. Okay. And you, Good. Virginia. And I want to come. And you. And you get a private island. And you get a private island. <laughs> be the oh. Oprah. 
That's so funny. Oh, we can come. Oh, yeah. I'm well, I'm definitely so coming then. Oh, I'll well, come, says Eileen. Welcome. <laughs> Everybody's coming. That's right. Well, this was fabulous. And I we could sit here and talk all day because I just love going through all the layers of this book. And, you know, there's quotes about how this book is just a rainbow and a thing of light. And I've told you that I can't think of someone else better to write it because you're your own your own light. And it's such a treat anytime I talk to you and when I get to go into your books and escape. So thank you for writing it. Well, thank you all. Thank you for having me. This has been wonderful. I couldn't imagine spending St. Patty's Day any other way. This has been fabulous. So I hope you all enjoy. And librarians, if you need me for anything, come find me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, reach out to me anyway. I love hearing from you all in any capacity. Um, and I'm here for you and your readers. I mean, this is all I'm doing through the rest of the year. So I'm yours. And she's not afraid of the cafeteria anymore because those kids would be lucky to sit with you. Oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still an introvert. So I still go into like mass rooms full of cafeteria style. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go over here and get a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you can sit with us anytime. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, All right. Sarah. Take care. Thank you. Love you Bye, all. Sarah. Thank you so much. Librarians, hang out. We're going to tell you for a couple of minutes about PLA. So if you want to hang, we'll hang too. Oh my God, she's amazing. Like I said, anytime I speak to her, my day is just so much brighter. And that book was such a fun escape. Like I want to go to Mystique right now. And seeing that video is wild because you're like, I wasn't even even thinking of them as real people in some way when reading it and then seeing them real. It's like, that, I get it. I, it just all came together. Yeah. Yeah. And princess Margaret, what a badass! I mean, she got the, you know, short end of the deal there, man. You know, she wasn't allowed to love who she wanted to love and whatever. Oh, but she had right. her fun. Um, right. Well, here we are. are. People still here. Yes. Very sad. I won't make it to PLA. Oh no. Um, Lisa Casper loves princess Margaret. Yes, she was cool. All right. Um, so what? So we had just a few minutes, but this was so great. That Lainey, that was such a great conversation you had with her. Thanks. Hats uh, to you. Delight, delight anytime. Um, so why don't we just talk about the things that are hot button issues? One of them being the Public Library Association. So, folks, if you're going, come see us. Yes, we're going to go. I'm not. I'm going to wear a hazmat suit. From the second I leave my apartment in Astoria, <laughs> God. Oh no! Um, but but uh, we have everything t uh, pinned to the top of our Library Love Fest blog, so that's everything that's going on. And because we don't, you know, we haven't been printing tons of galleys, obviously, because are we going to send them? Um, so we don't have as many as we would have normally at a show, and so we're we've made a a lane. Essie has made a collection of all of the e-galleys that we would have been handing out physically. So you are please more than welcome to click there and let us know what you want to know. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Everything is there that we'll have in the booth or that Virginia and I are speaking about when we present. And even if you come in person, there's, you know, limited amount of galleys. So it's all written down for you. It's a list for you. Yeah, thank yes. you. Essie did a great job putting it all together. Yes, she did. She collected everything. And so, you know, listen, we'll get back to some sort of normalcy. This is the toe in the water. And so we'll see how it goes. But as we said, for folks who are going and who aren't going, this is the kind of stuff that we would be pushing out there anyway. So there you go. But if you are going, there's our schedule, kind of a book buzz, a couple of those. So, you know, please come see us if, you, if you're around. Um, Donna Rasmussen said, Lainey rocked it. And you did, oh, referring to the interview. You. That's very sweet. Thank you. Um, yes, hazmat suit. Yes. Um, <laughs> now what? Um, yeah, so we don't have to go through all of the, the people, but um, is there anything we want to particularly tell them about on the schedule? Well, um, on the schedule, our buzzes, your buzz, my buzz, the, um, uh, the Alma uh, mystery program. That should be a cool thing. Um, so 
we have five authors going to this conference. So we're very excited about this. You know, we really are. It's going to be, yes, of course, you know, we're going to be careful and we're going to, but we're going to have fun. So, so just check it out, but definitely come to the buzzes and, um, and if you can. Now, um, we want to talk for one second because we have a few seconds left about, oh, good. Lainey just put the schedule up there or, or maybe Essie did. I don't know. I think Lainey did. We want to talk about Emer Ryan. So the we interviewed. So next week, obviously, we won't be here because we'll be in Portland. Um, so no Facebook Live next week. Um, but we re pre-recorded an interview with Emer Ryan, the author of the debut novel, Holding Her Breath. And um, we posted it, I think, yesterday. Um, but we want to make sure that you check this out because this book is really beautiful. Um, it was published in Ireland first. She won a ton of awards. And it's a coming of age story about a woman who is going to college at university. And she is, oh, thank you, Lane Essie. There's the video. Um, and uh, it's, it's, there's, there are problems. This, this, she has a, a grandfather who was a poet and everybody reveres him. And she's sort of like, Neh. and so, she, so she's got this sort of, there's a family thing. There's a, there's, there's skeletons in the closet. She's also dealing with, um, uh, you know, sort of coming into her own in the school. And she uh, was a swimmer and, she, and she, there's some, there's some, the, the pressures of uh, sport figure into this story, which I think is very topical and timely. And it is addressed, I think, um, in a in a real uh, responsible and authentic way. The author herself um, was not a swimmer, but she she taught herself how to swim. She she literally immersed herself in the role um, by learning how to swim so that she could um, I don't know illustrate how this character really is herself and most comfortable when she's in the water. And then what happens, what, what, what happens to her that she stops swimming? I, I, I just love this book and we love talking to her. She, she lives in uh, Cork and we talked to her the other day and um, I cannot speak more highly of this book because I just loved it and we all did. So if you have a second, check it out. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's up already, Lainey, where is it? It's on, where is it? It's somewhere. It, it's um, listed in the chat, and it's also on all of our socials, Facebook, YouTube, et cetera. Emer Ryan. And we learned all about Kamogi, which we didn't know anything about, because she is a Kamogi player, the author. And we were like, A, how do you pronounce it? B, what is it? And she's <laughs> terrific, just terrific. Um, yeah. And also uh, um, developed a, uh, a short documentary about women in sports. This woman is something else. I really hope you check out this book and look her up. She's got a great Twitter um, presence too. Yeah. What else? And one thing Emir and I bonded over is oh our my true God. crime obsession. And so that falls into news of what's going to happen after PLA. Um, so after PLA, our um, door to door where, you know, we have like a couple of door to doors we throw in there, not in our galley club. That's the week, the first week of April. But our door to door we throw in there. And I am so excited because speaking of true crime, I know where's Casey. I know I have my true crime people out here watching. Um, <laughs> we will be having on Billy Jensen, Killers of Its Killers. And I'm slightly freaking out a little because I, I'm such a fan of his work. Uh, if you don't, if you're not in the true crime space, if you are, you definitely know who he is. He is really big in that space. But if you don't, he um, is just a big per, uh, person in the true crime community. He helped finish Michelle McNamara's book, um, I'll Be Gone in the Dark. Um, he, when she passed away, he came in. He was a good friend of hers. He does a lot of... Um, a lot of solving community grassroots style. Like he really puts out a lot of ads on Facebook to kind of get the community involved and to get the word out about uh, murders or missing people. And he also co-hosts a podcast on the My Favorite Murder Exactly Right Network with Paul Holes, who was on the case of the Golden State Killer called The Murder Squad. And they do a lot of crowdsourcing there to help people understand crimes around them and see if they can get any tips. He is just insane 
insanely good at what he does. And I hate that it's a thing that he has to do. I'm not saying that. Fan seems like a, a weird thing to say because he's doing some tough subjects, but he is taking stuff that no one's paying attention to and he is really shining a light on it and trying to get answers and closure for people who are often overlooked. So in this uh, book, his new book, Killers Amidst Killers, this is looking at the opioid crisis and in particular some communities in Ohio that possibly have an overlap between people going missing or overdosing and a serial killer. And so he looks at it in a lot of different ways, a lot of um, systemic issues and the crimes itself I could not stop thinking about it. He gives names to these people who no one cares about. And I won't go into it, but I'm very excited. This is going to be a new day, Monday, um, not Tuesday. It's going to be on Monday, the 28th, 2 p.m. And please join us and bring questions. And and even if you're not a true crime fan, that's okay. This book is so much more than that. Um, so I really hope you, you come because it could be a good foray into that. And a, a book that is maybe not for all true crime people mm. this would probably be a good one that's yeah. a good point Lee. and and you know please share it with those in the library or your patrons well i mean we're really forward facing to the librarians but i mean please if there are folks in the library who are true crime aficionados i mean when when um we mentioned this to Ema ryan she was like bailey gentle was like dang, 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 dang. it was crazy so she's gonna be watching i'm sure um yeah so but yeah, well, I love what you're saying too, Lainey, that it's like you're, you know, you wish that this didn't have to be a thing. We're not taking any kind of joy, obviously, at a, right. the subject of this, and it's horrific. But what's, what is um, respectful um, about all of this is that they're putting names and faces to what's happened here. You know, these people mm -hmm. did matter. They do matter. And so it's going to be a really interesting conversation. So I'm glad that you said that. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. So now you... So, oh, Essie, mm -hmm. do we have the murder rule card up or do we have it to show? Um, I can try to share it because okay. I do have it. So let okay. me see if this will work. Dervla McTiernan, what? We couldn't let a St. Patrick's Day go by without mentioning Dervla McTiernan. Why am I doing that? Why not? Because <laughs> I'm sitting in front of my cottage. Uh, yes, um, let me see. My roof cottage with the red door. Anyway, Dervla McTiernan's book. Is coming out and we have so many people who are so excited when we've said that oh nice mental visual yes indeed um uh you know we're so thrilled to have her uh um, under our roof so um i'm looking up the date while essie looks for may 10th right. may 10th thank you me darling mm -hmm. murder rule look at that i love those quotes don winslow don winslow is like fanboying all over the place about mm -hmm. the murder rule that's part of a much bigger quote um so please check it out derville mctiernan the murder rule um yes library reads april 1 and if you're voting don't forget about holding her breath by Ema ryan because uh, and about, hmm? and mystic island it's may 10th and well. mystic island but of course um you'll devour it irresistible yeah 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 so um now that was a great book loved it oh lisa casper you already read it and loved it yes cool um and i think we have time to just say that um you know we're doing this galley chat which is a book club it's galley, galley club, club. <laughs> forever thank you essie galley <laughs> club um and it's uh, a book club for librarians and uh the great part about this a is that it's still in galley format it's early it's pre-pub which is what librarians want and um you get to meet some of the key players uh behind the scenes who uh worked on the book acquired the book maybe uh we had an audiobook narrator on we've done two already uh, we had julia whalen on talking about um, her role as an audiobook narrator and um it's really interesting and then ultimately the author comes on so this is over a three-week period we're doing one a month be right out. And, <laughs> um, and so our next reveal for month number three, April, will be on April 5th. Tuesday, April 5th, we mm -hmm. will talk about, we will reveal the book, and then we'll do a title presentation of a bunch of books we're jazzed about and probably tell you about some PLA shenanigans that went on. 
And then on April 12th, we'll have the team come on, various members of the team to talk about the book. And they will talk about books from their particular imprint. And then on the 19th of April, the author will come on. So in the meantime, we will give you the, uh, the e-galley, read it, and we hope you love it. And uh, we hope to participate in the conversation. And that, I think, is it. And it's 305, not bad. Actually, there's one more book to talk about for the uh, library reads. It was Rasmataz. Oh, Rasmataz. Okay. Lainey, you want to take that one? Tell them. The yeah. Um, also, I mean, since Katie is here, maybe we should give a shout out because Katie Stover is going to interview Christopher Moore. We've just firmed up all the details and um, she's going to interview him. So please. Keep a lookout for that. It'll probably be after we're back from PLA, but we're really excited. Katie's a big fan, um, and Christopher's really excited. And I think it's his. Oh, well, Katie, if I'm wrong, I think it's 30 years since his. Oh, well, anyway, it, it's a it's a big uh, anniversary for this book, and uh, she's been a big fan for a while. And it's the the latest from the the fun mind of Christopher Moore called Rasmataz. Don't know if we have that um, e card. If not, I can pull it up. But it's it's in May too, so library reads votes will be April first. You have a lot of reading and voting to get done. We do, we do, we do, we do. Well, one thing I'm going to say, I, you know what? I'm so Christopher Moore is such a blast. He's you all know him. He's so irreverent. He's so smart. Um, just such a funny fellow. And um, so we cannot wait to hear what uh, the conversation between. Christopher and Katie Stover. So Katie, you're listening. Thank you. Um, I see one comment here from Ms. Vicki Nesting who says, wish you could announce the Galley Club titles a little earlier to give us more time to read. And so that is helpful for us to know. I would love to know um, if you've participated in the first two Galley Clubs, um, if you share that feeling. Oh, there's the Rasmataz. That's so fun. Look at that great jacket. Um, so yeah, check that out. And when we have the uh, the finished conversation between Christopher and Katie, we will post that. But um, do let us know because we want this to be something that is helpful to you and fun for you. Um, so, you know, we're just kind of mixing up door to door a little bit and we still have them, as Lainey mentioned, for things such as today. But um, when we're not doing that, we will be focusing on a, a title a month. So if we realize you have a ton to read. So if we need to, you know, just sort of, um, you know, rejigger that a little bit, we're happy to, but we want to hear from, a, from, you know, a bunch of you. So please let us know. Just send us an email. There's a, yeah. there's a question here from Donna. Um, you don't, you don't have to sign up for Galley Club. It's just, you tune in every Tuesday. And if you're, um, if signed up for our newsletter, you can get all the event links at the, at the beginning of the month too. So that'll be easy to keep track of it all. But for the most part, it's the first three Tuesdays of every month. You don't have to sign up for anything. I see. Do you want to tell them about the Crowdcast link too? Yeah. So we also have, it's available live through Crowdcast and Facebook. So more options for people who aren't on Facebook, or if you know someone who's not on Facebook, but would want to be a part of this, it's, available now to a lot to a wider uh, range of people and we're just really excited about that because it's more to offer so yeah anybody anybody can just tune in on either platform yeah and if you subscribe to us on crowdcast you should get emails um, of every new event so that you can you can automatically sign up when it comes out but um if not, if, if there's something else we can do to make sure you see this, let us know. Like we're like Virginia said, we want to help you. Yep. Yep. So just let us know. We're always here. God knows. Where are we going? <laughs> um, PLA. Anyway, what's that? PLA. That's where we're going. Oh my God. We're going to PLA. <laughs> Get my hazmat suit out of the dry cleaners. All right. So, um, could you hear it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bring me a pint. Oh my God. <laughs> thank you so long. How does it still work? Okay. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. This was lovely. And we wish you all a happy St. Patrick's Day 
and uh, a lovely, uh, I don't know, a lovely week. And we'll see you when we get back and check out all the resources that were uh, mentioned today. And, and Sarah McCoy, if you're still listening, thank you again. That was fantastic. Thank <laughs> you.